Want to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And I am done. Okay, so I just finished up reading Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee, the author of The Greenbone Saga. And I want to give you my unedited thoughts upon finishing this book, which was just right now. So, ah, this was tough. Uh, I'm going to have to give this one a three out of five. Um, I was so so on it. I, uh, there were some good parts. There were some bad parts. And ultimately, it was just kind of whatever. You know, and, you know, Fonda Lee, I love. And I love Fonda Lee because of what she's done with the Greenbone Saga. I'm not familiar with her writing any books before the Greenbone Saga. I don't think that she has. But this book is going to be highly, highly anticipated by all fans of fantasy because of how enormous that series ended up being for great reason. Um, I gave all, all three of those books five out of five scores, which I have not done many times before for trilogies. So I was caught up in the hype too. But I started to get a little weary of how optimistic everybody was about this book when I found out that this is just a novella. And I've never read a novella that I've ever given above a four out of five. Now that's personal preference. But I come into reading my fantasy books wanting big epic stories. And it's just, in, in terms of what I've read, impossible to deliver what I'm looking for in a fantasy book in a short, short package. And that's certainly what happened here. Uh, you know, Fonda Lee's a good writer, and, but her good writing could not carry this book into being more than it was because of how short it was. You know, she, I've always said that her prose is good, but not like mind blowing. Now, maybe some people take exception to that, but her writing quality itself, just her prose, was not what made the Greenbone Saga as amazing and acclaimed as it was. It was the story, it was the characters. And the story and the characters here were decent, you know, not amazing. So if you're not familiar with what Untethered Sky is all about, this is the story, a, I don't know even if you could call it a coming of age story because it's so short, it's not enough time to come to age, um, but it's about this giant winged beast um, that, these, uh, that these handlers are trained to ride from a young age. They're given these and their whole job is to hunt manticores. Manticores are exactly what you kind of think they are, that kind of the myth mythological kind of giant, you know, saber cat, huge beast with that kind of human kind of face. But in this book, they're terrifying. And these beasts can fly in, the manticore does not see them coming, and it dives in and attacks them from up above and kills them and saves, you know, the, the biggest threat that this world has in front of it. And that's kind of, that's what this whole book is about. Uh, you know, the training process, you know, getting the, this creature assigned to this char main character, and then a couple quick adventures while riding this animal, and then we're done. Uh, you know, pull the curtain, we're, we're, we're done. And it just felt so sudden. And, you know, it, it's, I hate to do this because I just, I still feel these positive feelings from Fonda Lee. And I also know for a fact that this book is going to be highly acclaimed as well. Not because of how good this book is. Uh, now, this is my just disclaimer here, Matt's opinion, but because you just know some authors are going to be acclaimed no matter what they put out. So this book, I have no doubt is going to be nominated for some Hugo, probably win for a, a you know a short novella type book, and everyone's gonna love uh, this author for what was done here. And I just, you know, I felt like that before I read the book, and I feel like that afterwards too. I just that's just how it works sometimes. Don't want to go into more detail, but that's how it works. And you know, I worry that Fonda Lee is going down the path, and I hope I'm wrong of what Martha Wells did. Now, Martha Wells was a, I, I believe, a rather prolific writer in the fantasy genre. And then she switched into this murder bot novella. She won a bunch of awards for it, sold a ton of books, charged an astronomical amount for the amount of pages there are. I think it's $15 per murder bot book, maybe, maybe more, uh, for these little short books. And she's ultimately probably made I don't know how much writers make, but I'm guessing she's made 
an enormous amount of money for writing these little books. And all of the murder bot books combined are about the size of an epic fantasy. And I just kind of worry that Fonda Lee has taken a cue there and gone, you know, it's so much easier to write these short little novellas. I mean, it probably took her a fraction of the times it took to wrote, write just one of the Green Bun Saga books. And maybe this is a new formula. Let me pray that that is not the case. Um, because in still using my example, you know, Martha Wells, I'm reading a, a previous book of hers, um, The Cloud Roads, and I'm liking it a lot. She's a, clearly a very capable fantasy writer who just went down this interesting path. Um, and another worry of mine is, you know, how much this book costs? It's the same thing. You know, I looked this book up and the cheapest I could find it was like $15 for a hundred something page book. That is, that's crazy to me. I don't understand that at all at all and i didn't even get the real book i got the, you know you're looking it up on like kindle that's how much it is so that's weird that's just that shouldn't be the model going forward but you know i don't care i don't buy my books i get them all from the library uh anyways or sent to me in arc form so but you know looking at it from the consumer standpoint you know i don't love that in the slightest so yep ultimately i can't recommend this book it's got some interesting concepts I, I, you know, the writing is good. The character work though is just so-so. You know, the idea that we don't even get an antagonist in this book, you know, that's not great. You know, I, I believe that art can take many different forms and you don't have to have a formula for what makes a book good. But in general, the kind of books that I like, they have some sort of antagonist, whether they are truly a bad guy or, you know, somebody on the other side of this conflict, it just doesn't exist here. I guess these manicores are the so-called antagonist here, but they're just like animals. They're just, they're not evil. They're just doing what they what animals do. So didn't love that, that idea either. The book just ends quick. I mean, I flew through this book in about a day and it could have been fleshed out. It could have, this whole book could have been turned into a legitimately good novel. If some more effort was put into it, these characters could have got fleshed out more. We could have introduced some other concepts, brought in some sort of you know deeper compelling force here on why this needs to be done. And it would have made the themes hit so much harder, but you know, it is what it is. I don't need to go into depth too much more. I think you get what I'm talking about. I'm gonna wrap it up there. Uh, I hope that you are one of the many people that ends up reading this book, that you end up loving it and saying, Matt, what are you talking about? More power to you. I hope that is the case and that I am once again on my little silo of my own personal opinion. It is what it is, but I hope you don't agree with me. So uh, that's where I stand. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, happy reading to you. Thank you so much to my patrons with a special shout out to my Ascendant tier patrons, Anna, Ben, Brian, CJ, Don Newt, Darren, Jamie, Maria, Michael Sugarman, My Book is Lit, Romeo Mike, Ron Reich, Russell, and Skye.